Good morning, everyone, and happy Earth Day. Uh, I'm Assemblywoman Kati Petrie Norris, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. The world today can sometimes feel like we are living through the disaster movie. Raging wildfires, drought-ravaged crops, thousand-year floods. On this Earth Day, it, it certainly seems like Mother Earth is trying to send us a message. Wake up wake up and smell the science. And the simple truth that is that it's a wake up call we have been ignoring for far too long. And we must act now to confront the existential threat of the climate crisis. As we all know, California has long been a leader in this all important fight. And as our state continues to work to achieve our ambitious and important climate goals, lowering emissions, realizing 100% clean energy future. Alongside that work, we also need to get serious about the work that's needed to safeguard California. And by that, I mean strategies that adapt to, to climate change and strategies that will help us mitigate the impact. And that's, that's true nowhere more than on the California coast. Our coast is 840 miles of absolutely breathtaking beauty home to 70, nearly 70% of Californians and a major driver of California's economy. The fact is that all of this, all of this is under threat from sea level rise. In the coming years and decades, millions of people and billions of dollars are at risk. So that is the bad news. But the good news, the good news is that it is not too late for us to confront this slow moving tsunami of sea level rise. It is not too late for us to take important action to protect the California coast. And that is why this session, I'm really pleased to have been able to introduce a package of legislation to protect our coast. Uh, I've, I, We'll be talking about four bills briefly today. AB 67 is the Sea Level Rise Preparedness Act of 2021. And this will ensure that sea level rise is taken into account properly when our state agencies are planning for and investing in state infrastructure. I've also introduced a package of three bills to cut green tape in order to support vital restoration and adaptation projects along the coast. Right now, these efforts face many challenges. Coastal adaptation and restoration projects face high costs, a lack of available resources, and a really complicated approval process. Sometimes projects that literally take three weeks can take years and years of planning and permitting. This is a huge problem and we do not have time to to waste. So I'm really pleased that we were able to introduce legislation to cut green tape and remove some of these hurdles. AB 63 allows for the restoration of marine life in marine conservation areas. AB 72 establishes a coordinated and efficient process for coastal adaptation permitting. And AB 1408 will reduce the cost for coastal adaptation projects. Uh, I'm really gratified that I've been able to work with many leading experts as we've developed these policy solutions. And we're joined by a number of those uh, individuals and those leaders today. So uh, today we'll be joined by Steve Padilla uh, from the California Coastal Commission, Nancy Caruso, marine biologist and the founder of Get Inspired Incorporated, Jennifer Savage from the Surfrider Foundation and Louisa Mor uh, Morris from the Sonoma County Agricultural Rural Preservation and Open Space District. Uh, with that, really pleased to welcome Steve Padilla. Steve, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Petrie Norris, certainly for your leadership, um, for uh, your solid package of bills and the leadership that you're demonstrating on making it easier for us to accelerate and get to the bottom line, which is to make it easier to do restoration and to preserve access and coastal resources up and down our precious coast. So thank you for including uh, me this morning and by extension, the commission as a whole, and thanks for your leadership. The commission has had a critical mission, uh, three times affirmed by the people of the state of California since the early 1970s, to protect precious coastal resources, to protect access to those resources. And today, I think the agency, and I know my colleagues and I all understand that the greatest existential threat that we face in the modern world is climate change. It has tremendous, not just resource impacts, but public health impacts. 
uh, environmental and social justice impacts and certainly economic impacts. I don't know anyone who would deny that one of our greatest economic resources as well in the state of California is our precious coast. And to that end, the California I'm sorry, was I muted during that entire time? Nope, just for your, your last sentence, Steve. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Somebody was but we've got you now, you're back. All right, um, I don't think there's any doubt that the uh, commission understands this threat, that we have been and will continue to, to be a ready and willing and appropriate partner uh, to work with our partners at this, in, in the legislature and in the administrative leadership. And also, most importantly of all, uh, with our local partners in planning appropriately uh, to adapt and change. The reality is the water is coming and we have an obligation. We have an obligation to future generations to be able to lead in this area with respect to public infrastructure, to respect with, to building partnerships with local uh, stakeholders, property owners, and to share the best science and the best and current information with those that are responsible for making sure that we adequately plan. And we've been doing that with our sea level rise guidance policies, with our grant funding that we're looking to expand to help local jurisdictions better plan for adaptation, to adopt the right adaptation policies, uh, and to help people really rethink how we plan and deal with land use in the coastal zone. Um, and so again, thank you for your leadership assembly member. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, we will continue to be that partner for you, whether it's on your legislative package or supporting the Pro Tems SB1 for a comprehensive approach. But uh, these efforts need to be brought together in a strategic and fiscally supported way that allows us to strategically plan together as a state uh, to preserve one of our best resources, our coast. So thank you very much for including me. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, and now I'm pleased to welcome Nancy Caruso. Nancy, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Today we choose to consciously acknowledge the Earth and all it provides for us. I've been working on ocean restoration projects for the last 20 years, restoring kelp forests, abalone, sea bass, and pismo clams. Uh, kelp forests are known as the rainforests of the sea. More than 800 species rely on them, and they're important carbon sinks. They boast, bolster our coastal defenses. They make oxygen, and they're beginning to play a major role in our blue economy. Now, kelp forests have declined along the entire coast of California over the last five years, and some have completely collapsed in Monterey and on our north coast. It took me 10 years to restore our kelp forests here in Orange County back in 2002, but I didn't do it alone. I had the help of 5,000 kids growing it in their classrooms and over 250 volunteers diving, helping me plant it in the ocean. And we manage our terrestrial forests. Now it's time to manage our kelp forests and the important resources that they are. Now, this kind of work takes cooperation and support on many levels, from citizens and kids to the government agencies and our elected officials. I'm so grateful for Assemblywoman Petrie Norris's commitment to helping our ocean and protecting our coast and helping to cut the green tape. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Savage. Thank you, Nancy, and happy Earth Day, everyone. I'm Jennifer Savage, California Policy Manager for the Surfrider Foundation. Surfrider is a nonprofit dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's ocean, beaches, and waves for all people. So I'm really excited to be here supporting Assemblymember Petrie Norris's efforts to save California's beaches. As most everybody has probably heard, you, we are without proper adaptation moving forward risk at risk of losing up to 70% of Southern California's beaches by 2100. And in these efforts that Surfrider uh, strives for when it comes to coastal preservation, at the heart of that, it's really about coastal access and who the beach belongs to. And thanks to the California Coastal Act, our beaches here in California belong to everyone, residents and visitors alike. And that's likely why three out of four Californians, regardless of gender, background, or ethnicity, and across the entirety of the state, 
say the condition of the ocean and the beaches is very important to California's quality of life. And I just want to think a, a moment and articulate what it means to potentially lose our beaches, because we know the harm to, you know, there's infrastructure, there's the economy, but there's also the simple joys that the beach provides, you know, walking down the sand, collecting seashells, playing frisbee, stretching out with a book or with a bunch of friends to catch up on the day, playing in the ocean. You know, clearly uh, we Surfrider has a vested interest in protecting surf breaks. And if there's no sand, there will no longer be anywhere good to surf. So it's very problematic. The, the impact that sea level rise will have on our coastal habitats, economy and recreational opportunities to address these threats with the urgency required we must improve the current review process. We need beneficial adaptation projects that protect public resources, reduce damage to critical infrastructure, and address the needs of vulnerable communities, as well as protect our recreational opportunities. So this suite of bills put forth by Assemblymember Petrie Norris offers hope for local governments, for frontline communities, and all of those who care about a healthy California coast, which should be all of us. So thank you. And with that, I'll hand things over to Louisa Morris. Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Louisa Morris and I'm with the Sonoma County Ag and Open Space District. I've also worked extensively with nonprofits to do restoration and public access projects on the Northern California coast. It can be really difficult for small nonprofits to afford both the permit fees and navigate the green tape that's associated with these public benefit projects. So I'm really grateful to assembly member Petrie Norris for her vision and leadership and the bills that she's proposing that will help with uh, good nonprofits doing this kind of work and other agencies as well. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today and honored as well on Earth Day. It's so important that we all give back and act as stewards for this fragile planet, especially along our coasts. We must work together to address climate change and its associated permanent long-term effects. And as Californians, we're leaders in addressing the impacts of climate change and being both proactive and innovative. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for being here. And I just wanna, before we open it up for questions, I wanna thank all of you, both for being here today and also for your leadership and uh, for all that you are doing um, in the important fight to protect and uh, preserve the California coast. Um, so with that, we are happy to open it up if there's any questions uh, from the reporters who have joined us. Members of the media, if you have a question and would like to ask, um, feel free to raise your hand and I would be happy to unmute you. Okay, it looks like at this time there are no questions in the queue. Feel free to follow up via email and we'll be happy to answer those questions later. Wonderful. Thank you, Lizzie. And, and thank you again, everyone who uh, joined us this morning. Uh, you know, on this Earth Day, we are reminded that the health of our planet is, is in our hands and uh, it is the duty of our generation to ensure that we preserve and protect Mother Earth for generations to come. Uh, thank you everyone and uh, happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Thanks, Assemblymember. Thank you, Assemblymember. Thank you,